We keep clean. Beneath our homes, there are pipes bringing us fresh water for our clothes, hands, and the meals that we prepare. Thirst and filth are solved with waters piped from far away. The rare possibility of forgetting to be clean is solved with sinks, sanitizer, and towelettes. Our habit is reinforced everywhere. This was not the case in Los Angeles at the close of 1924. These were the tracks, shanty structures, and unpaved roads of the Macy District, just outside of today's Union Station. Los Angeles was capable of providing paved roads and concrete buildings, but neglected to do so in immigrant neighborhoods, further reinforcing the dirt and filth of the area. In the center of urban Los Angeles, Cesar Chavez Avenue is the main artery to Twin Towers Correctional Facilities, Union Station, and then crosses the Los Angeles River. In 1924, these mark the boundaries of the Mexican district. The Mexican laborers who worked for the railways lived in these houses. After heavy labor on the tracks, they returned to their homes, which lacked plumbing. In late September of 1924, Jesus Lahun climbed beneath his home that once stood at 700 Clara Street, here in the Mexican district. He looked under there for whatever it was that smelled of death. Past rusted nails and discarded garbage, he found a dead rat. Lahun tossed it into a pile of waste and went on with his day. By the first week of October, both Lahun and his teenage daughter Francisca were sick with what the visiting doctor from the Los Angeles General Hospital diagnosed as severe flu. Three days later, Francisca was in an ambulance to General Hospital when she died. Jesus passed away two days later. In the next weeks, those folk who had cared for Francisca and Jesus began to fall ill. The curato, a neighbor who knew traditional remedies, was the first to show symptoms. Then her husband, then the priest, then her cousins, and immediate families all fell ill with pains in their back. Some had difficulties breathing. They all had swellings in their groin and armpits. Soon enough, more people began to die. On Halloween, Dr. Emil Bogan from General Hospital realized that a highly contagious disease had grown up in the filth of Eastern Los Angeles. General Hospital informed city officials. They made the decision to set up a quarantine around the Mexican district. A laboratory in General Hospital discovered black plague in the lungs of Los Angeles residents. All symptomatic subjects were brought to General Hospital. All but two of the 36 people died of what was identified as both the bubonic and mnemonic plague that was transferred by rats. The political response lacked transparency. Besides concerns of slowing immigration of Anglo-Americans to the city, officials also feared the Mexicans would scatter and spread the disease, as expressed by J.L. Pomery, a county health supervisor. Overnight, the police gathered rope from the fire department and used it to close off the district. Guards were posted in all entrances to the homes where the infected had been found. By the morning of November 1st, the response was set all Mexicans who died were subjected to autopsy. Gatherings were prohibited. Schools were closed. The Pacific Electric Trolley did not make stops. No unauthorized personnel were to enter nor exit. It took two weeks of quarantine to finally clear the city of the Black Plague. By November 16th, Los Angeles had set aside funds for a large-scale trapping projects. The project included demolition of homes and other structures. No records show that compensation was or ever would be provided to the displaced. Health official Walter Dickey advised the city council not to offer any aid beyond that which had kept the people alive only during the quarantine period. The same folk who had woken on November 1st to find themselves trapped in the Mexican district were made to leave their homes and disappear into 1925 
without any coordinated plan for relocation. 2,000 structures were demolished by the summer of 1925, and half a million was spent on the project that cleared the Mexican districts of rats and the Mexicans. Labs were established to test the vermin. 56 rats were found to be plug positive. However, it is unknown how many thousands of Mexicans lost their homes and were forced to find new ones. Lost too are the images of those who died in the last epidemic to strike an American urban area. Hundreds of pictures were taken at the time, but we see none of the victims nor those who were trapped in the quarantine. We only have photos of their trappers.